Okay, a lot of stuff to talk about today in sports. Um, Jimmy Johnson won the NASCAR race today. Um, well, first off, he started in 37th place, and then he won. I mean, so 37, talked about that multiple times here. Um, so J- Jimmy Johnson, I'll move, oh, I'm going to talk about a few other things, and then I'll talk about Jimmy Johnson. So Dale Earnhardt Jr., Finished in third place again. All right, so yeah, Earnhardt finished in third, and in the Daytona 500, for the load, he got third, and his dad was number three, and his dad, everybody knows, he wrecked at the Daytona 500 and died or whatever, but and I talked about in the last video about how they're they're building it up to uh kill somebody this year that's just that that's what they're doing and um go back and watch my other video and it explains a little bit more i've talked about it for a few times now but uh anyway i wanted to do a i'm going back to the race from today march 1st here and the people the reagans who raced for the bushes they got side by side again the 17th and 18th place so the 18 car got 18th place. And then Reagan Smith and David Reagan were one after the other. And last week, the same thing happened. Except for they were 16th and 17th. And the 18 car got 18th place. So I'm not quite sure of the significance, but... uh. That's pretty strange that two weeks in a row, uh, Earnhardt gets third, and then these two guys replacing the bushes or whatever, they get right next to each other, and this guy actually replaced uh, one of the bushes. I explained it in a different video, but uh, the 18 car, it was Kyle Busch, so 18 car gets 18th the first two races, and then the two guys, the two Reagans replacing the bushes. They get 16th and 17th, and then 17th and 18th in the next race. That's that's some strange stuff. Anyway, so Jimmy Johnson wins the race. And Jimmy Johnson, yes, he's won tons of races, whatever. But I talked about um, August 4th, because that is the same uh, day that Obama was born, the same day that Kurt, Kurt Bush was born. Um, anyway, so... That's 8-4 is August 4th, and Jimmy Johnson is the mirror, 48. So anyway, a big story in the race today was that Jeff Gordon got wrecked, and when he wrecked, he ran into one of the walls that didn't have the protective barrier. So basically, Jeff Gordon was frustrated with hitting another wall not protected by the, the safe barrier. And Gordon said, uh, I'm very frustrated the fact that there was no safer barrier down there. Um, I know it was a hard hit. I didn't expect it to be that hard. I go out and I got, I go out and looked and oh well, big surprise. I found the one wall on the back straightaway that doesn't have a safe, safer barrier. And, um, Kyle Bush actually tweeted about the, the wreck. Uh, he tweeted, uh, pretty convenient to see that the safer barrier end just before Jeff Gordon pounds wall. Bush said, hope he's healthy. When will this end at NASCAR? And he's, he's supposedly mad because he just wrecked and he was out for the Daytona 500 and who knows how long because he broke, uh, both legs or whatever. And so basically what they're doing here is, you know, they, I, there's a stolen whatever I talked about in the last video, but like they're building it up. They're just they're building up a story that something bad's gonna happen because of these safe barriers aren't on there. I mean, were they on there last year? That wasn't an issue last year, was it? I never read any articles. Maybe there was, but I mean, two weeks in a row now we have uh, wrecks because they're missing the safer barrier on the wall. So basically what they're doing, I really think they're building it up because they're going to they're going to murder somebody or they're going to somebody's going to die this year in NASCAR. I just have a great feeling because they build up these articles like this. And um yeah, I don't know. That's just 
it's just crazy. You just kind of go and read some of these articles, and they really want you to think that it's super dangerous, and, and I mean, it is, but, I mean, they're just, they're making a story out of it. And by the way, Jeff Gordon's birthday is also August 4th. So, I mean, he's the, he's probably like the biggest story other than Johnson winning. Johnson's the 48. Gordon's born on 8-4, the mirror. Anyway, also the wreck was uh, involved four people. Jeff Gordon was one. He drives the number 24 car. Ryan Newman was the other, another one. He uh, is number 31, so 21 and, or 31 and 24 is uh, 55. Uh, Denny Hamlin was one who caused it all, and he is number, or he was in it too, so he's number 11, so 55 and 11 is 66. And the fourth guy was Jamie McMurray, who is, drives the number one, so 66 plus one is 67. So you add up all of the car numbers of all four people in that wreck, and it's 67. And 1967 was 48 years ago, and Jimmy Johnson was the number 48. I mean, read this article here. Uh, Hamlin was the one who caused the wreck in the 11 car. I didn't see Hamlin spin out there, McMurray said. I was trying to pass the number 31 Newman on the bottom, and I honestly thought I got hit by the number 31. I had to replay to see the, that Hamlin had lost it on top and came down. I didn't know if he clipped the number 31 or if he clipped me. I didn't see any of that coming. Well, they just keep talking about 31. March 1st is 3-1. Gordon also finished in 41st place, which is Kyle Busch's car is 41, and they also share the same birthday, 8-4, the day that the 48 wins. And this week also, again, last week was the same way. You had number 4, 88, and 22 all right next to each other. I mean, all the top four, 22, 88, and 4. Hamlin was in fourth last week, and Johnson got fifth. And Hamlin is 11, but it's just weird. 4, 88, 22, all numbers I've talked about multiple times. And two weeks in a row, they're right next to each other. So basically, I just think that someone's going to die in, in NASCAR this year. I just, I've just i seen it too much. I've seen too much stuff that points to it. And Dale Earnhardt was, I believe, the last person that, to die in NASCAR. And I talked about Charlotte, and I talked about Michael Jordan a whole bunch in the last video. And I didn't realize Dale Earnhardt's first race ever was at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And I also forgot to mention that Michael Jordan actually owns the Charlotte Hornets in basketball. So, yeah, Michael Jordan owns the Charlotte Hornets. And they actually were established in 1988 as an expansion team. And Anthony Mason, the basketball player who just died uh, yesterday, I think, uh, he actually played for the Hornets as well. So, just kind of weird stuff. Charlotte is a Charlotte's a big thing. Today, also, the the Rockets beat the Cavaliers. Because LeBron James missed two free throws at the very end of the game. So, LeBron James played 42 minutes, and when he missed the two free throws at the end of overtime, uh, there was 4.2 seconds left on the clock. So, 4.2 seconds, he missed two free throws, and he played 42 minutes. And he also ended up with 37 points then. So it, And... So he missed two free throws, and for the game, he shot 3 of 11 on free throws. That means he missed 8 out of his 11 free throws, which gives you an 88. And then, since he, he missed them on purpose, he got his 37 points, so it was 37 and 88. 4.2 seconds left. He played 42 minutes. And since he missed both free throws, it left them with 103 points. And 103 is the 27th prime number, and 27 years ago was 1988, and 88 years ago was 1927. And I talked about uh, Space Jam and Michael Jordan making his comeback in 1994-95, uh, and he was number 45, and it has to do with Valentine's Day, 
and twenty three his twenty third game back he switched back to number twenty three and a whole bunch of stuff. But anyway, that year the Bulls didn't win when he came back. The Houston Rockets won the NBA Finals. Um, so they they've been running with the story a lot. So who knows? The Rockets I think have a great chance of winning. And for a couple more reasons than that. So um, I talked about Portland in the last video as well, but this year uh, a famous Portland Trailblazer, Clyde Drexler, actually played for the Houston Rockets. So that takes away from that. And then the Rockets are also like the red and the white that have to do with like the rose colored stuff. And the Rockets beat the Orlando Magic. And I don't know how it plays in there, but Dwight Howard is basically to me famous for being uh orlando magic player or whatever so and now he plays for the rockets so i don't know i think the rockets might actually win the finals this year but who knows we'll see how it plays out they might change the story up or whatever but as it's looking right now they i don't know they're kind of building it up it looks like i guess like i said i don't know how long they're gonna keep doing this uh valentine's type theme but it's definitely, I can, I see it all the time now. It's just, it's always here. It's been in like everything I've looked at. So who knows? And also, what is the deal with these uh, first African-American players of a certain thing to be, they're all dying all of a sudden or they're in the news. It's crazy here. So I talked about Earl Lloyd and he just died on February 26th. He was the first um black person to play in the NBA. And then today, Minnie Minoso died. Uh, so M.M. even. Um, but uh, anyway, he was the first black Cuban in the major leagues and also the first black White Sox player. And White Sox, Chicago, Michael Jordan, um, Black Sox scandal, all kinds of stuff, but it's just pretty weird. So the first in black NBA player dies uh, like three days ago, and then now the first Cuban, black Cuban in the major leagues dies, and also the first White Sox player. So I thought, all right, I'm going to look up other sports and, and see what they have. So, And uh, Charlie Sifford was the first African-American to play on the PGA Tour, and he also died. He died this year, February 3rd, this year, 2-3, 2015, so 23. He was born in 22 on 6-2, and he has 22 professional wins and two PGA Tour wins, like I said, born in 22. Oh, and back to the uh, baseball player guy, it if you go to the list here, he's actually the 10th uh, African-American player, but he was the first black Cuban. But it says his first game was on May 1st of 51, so 5-1 of 51. But if you click on him, it actually says his first game was in April 19th, 1949. Nineteen forty nine I've talked about multiple times. And five one in nineteen fifty one. Five one of nineteen fifty one. Come on. And I did a search on the first black NHL player, and this guy wasn't the first NH first black NHL player, but the first black American NHL player. But it's still pretty significant. And you come down here, whatever, there's an article about him. I I'm not even gonna read it, but well, I did read it, but I'm not going to read it on here. But look, February 26, 2015, it was that recent that they wrote an article about that guy. And his name was Val James, and he was born on Valentine's Day, 1957. And no, this article isn't about his recent birthday or anything like that. It's just basically a, a story about him. Anyway, I'm running out of time. I'm just going to end it there. But I mean, come on. What are the odds that there's a first... Uh, a black something and something. There's there's baseball, hockey, uh, NBA, and uh, golf. I guess I never looked at NFL, but I'm running out of time. So 
Uh, but, I mean, what are the odds of having all of them in the same month? But, uh, anyway, have a great night.